Hello my dears, welcome to this week's video, Transcending with DLC. This week I want to work around the subject, anything is possible. Okay, so, unless you've been living under a rock, or you haven't been following my journey, if this is the first time to one of my videos and podcasts, welcome. I hope that you stick around and look back at my journey that I've done so far. But this week has been a massively significant part of my transition and journey, because it's been five years since I started my transition. So... Five years ago was actually the anniversary of me starting working um, in my new town. So it was a new job, new town, new gender. And it was the scariest day of my life. I don't mind admitting that. Um, I was absolutely petrified. I was hyperventilating. But I'm going to rewind for a bit. So five years ago yesterday would have been the 15th of July 2012. And it was the day before I started work. And I was sitting there in the room that I was um, renting at the time. I was, my landlady came in to me and she goes, Debbie, you're not going to leave the house today. And I was like, I'm too scared. She's like, you do realise you're going to have to go to work tomorrow. So I kind of took the ball by the horns and then I started doing the work. Um, I started, you know, I left the house and I was absolutely petrified. But when I came back, I was glad I did it because the next day it was easier to leave the house again, having done it the day before. Um, I'm just going to rewind a bit and I want to ask you a, a question. Do you know what the difference is between human beings and every other life form? Bit of a strange question, but if you think about it for a second, the way that human beings differ from every other single life form is that every other life form will try and achieve the maximum of its potential. I'm going to give you an example. You think of a tree, right? A tree, when it's growing in the ground, doesn't get to a certain height and it thinks, yeah, that'll do. I've grown enough, you know, I'm getting enough sunlight and stuff. A tree will grow as tall as it can. It will produce as many branches as it can, as many leaves as it can. It'll produce as much fruit or flowers as it can. It puts its roots, it's deep in the ground as it can go in order to obtain the maximum of its potential. So why don't human beings do that? I'm going to give the answer again. It's because we've been given the freedom of choice. We've actually been we have the conscious ability to be able to think, actually, I'm going to do this or I'm not going to bother. I'm just going to let life wash over me. I understand why people are scared to make significant changes and certainly one as significant as a transition that I've made. It's scary. It's absolutely terrifying, you know, to go from a position where everyone accepts you to not knowing whether people are going to accept you, if you're going to be successful, whatever that is. It's truly terrifying. And the next six steps I'm going to share with you will hopefully help you to come to terms with some of those in, um, uncertainties and insecurities that you have, but also in sharing what I'm sharing with you now. These are lessons that I've learned, learned over the last six years that will hopefully help you on your journey. So step number one, it's not going to be easy, but it's going to get better. I'm sure you're thinking, oh yeah, thanks for that. But certainly, if you go back now a few minutes ago when I was talking about being scared to leave the house, I was absolutely petrified. I didn't want to leave the house. I was shaking. I was really nervous. Same on my first day when I went into my new job. I walked into the office and I know I was almost hyperventilating. And my boss said to me, do you want to go back? I said, no. And I stepped over the threshold of the open plan office and I went. And you know, as the days went by, the weeks went by, then the months and the years went by, any journey that is requires a significant amount of change, or if you're making a massive change in your life, it's going to be difficult. There are going to be times when you're absolutely petrified and you don't want to do it, but you have to keep putting yourself in the position of uncertainty or not knowing how it's going to be because in doing so you're going to get better at it and as soon as you you know with 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 confidence can com comes competence i've shared this in my previous articles a confidence competence loop psychologists call it so the more you do something the more confidence you get at it the more confidence you become the, the more confident you become sorry the more competent you become so it's a it's a circle like that so please 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 understand you have to keep going step number two is you can worry, but don't let worry rule you. Now, um, I'm sure you've heard of the phrase, the glass is half empty, but it's also half full. Now, I would be a hip, I would be a, a, a spanner if I stood here in front of you and argued that the glass wasn't half empty. Because if a glass half full, logic dictates it's also half empty. I'm a positive thinking person. I really try and look at the positive in most situations. And life is part negative you know you have to understand that you know specifically in this journey i've had so many times when i really really struggled with the things i'm going through but you know you can you can do one of two things you can let the negativity rule you or you can rule it be this master not the servant you know 
take your doubts that you have, think about them and put in, in like try and put a positive spin on it or try and see the positivity in the situation that you're in and then put it to one corner and then move on. You have to be the master of it. You know, pessimism is needs educating. Um, you need to educate yourself and what you're going through and why you're going through it in the positive um, reasons that you've done it. I'm sure if you make the significant changes I have, you did it for reasons um, that were positive. So think on those and then move towards those and I'm sure you'll, you'll see that actually life can be positive. Step number three, you reap what you sow. Think of the farmer who in the spring is, you know, he's ploughed the field and then he's put in the seeds and then he gets his crop in the autumn. If you're not going to be willing to make the effort to take the steps every day to make the changes that you want to make, you're never going to have the product that you want. You have to understand that in order to to reap a crop, you have to, you have to, you know, sow the seeds and, you know, the effort that you put in is the effort that you will you will get out. You're the architect of whatever it is that you that you are responsible for. You know, people are going to be there. They're going to support you. There are going to be certain people who are going to be there in your journey who will give you teachings and blessings, whatever it is. But it ultimately, it has to start with you. If you don't start, it's never going to happen for you. So please understand that you reap what you sow. Step number four, you are going to arrive in five years. The question is where. Five years ago, if you'd have told me that I would be standing in front of you, having won awards, having, you know, doing this podcast and having this website and doing doing this podcast on iTunes and stuff, I thought you were mad. I knew I was going to share my journey, but I never knew how much and how much in sharing my journey I would help support others in their transition and struggles and stuff. You know, God, God willing, the universe, whatever it is you believe, I hope that you have your health and in five years from now you're looking back at this video or you're thinking about the, this thing that you've watched and you thought, you know what, Debbie was right. You know, I did arrive and I arrived somewhere that was of my own violation because I took the courage and the steps to, to, to pursue the thing that I wanted to. You can either, you've got two choices, you know, you, you can either, you can either be someone who lets life wash over you or you can be like the tree and you can try and grow to the maximum of your potential. But five years from now, I do really hope that you're sincerely, you are here, you are healthy and that you are, you know, you are living the, the life of your dreams. But if you're here and you're healthy and you're not living the life in your dreams, it's your choice. It's no one else's. Step number five is make mistakes. Learn from them and move on from them. Now, I'm going to share a saying with you. Practice makes, most people will say, perfect. I disagree. And I heard this from Tony Robinson and really it challenged my um, perception of what perfection is and how striving for things are and how I can change my view towards that. So... Perfection is an unattainable goal. I know a lot of coaches will disagree with me or life coaches will be saying, what on earth are you saying? But when, you, when you're striving for perfection, you're actually putting pressure on you upon yourself that is actually can become so overwhelming. It can actually make you stop trying to achieve the goal that you want to achieve. You have to break it down in little chunks that are achievable. There's no shame in, you know, some days if you can just leave the house as I did on that first day then you you know you've started that step to being the person that you want to be you don't have to strive for the absolute you know the maximum say if you've just started running you're not going to try and be Usain Bolt the very first time you're on a running track it takes time it takes training it takes a lot of years of effort and keeping going and not giving up to get to that goal so you have to understand you know I have made so many mistakes since I've been transitioning I've upset people, I've said hurtful things, but you know, rather than beat myself up about them, I've tried to take learnings from them. I've apologized when I've needed to and I've moved on and you know, I feel a better person for doing that. Your mistakes are there to give you lessons and as long as you don't make the same mistake again, then it's not a mistake, it's a lesson. You know, one of the things I try and emphasize with my daughter on every time I see her, it's like, you can make a mistake, it's fine. I think there's far too much of an emphasis on people to get things right the first time and we live in such a throwaway culture now where if you don't get things right the first time people just give up or they just throw it away because they think it's not worth it. Make the mistake, it's there to give you a lesson. And step number six, bit of an unusual on this one and if you've noticed any of my other blogs in the past I've always normally shared four or five steps but step number six is I want you to be challenged by other people's experiences. And what do I mean by that? Okay, it doesn't matter who you are in life, there is always going to be people around you who are struggling they might be struggling with finances, they might be struggling with relationships, they might be strangers, you know, in, in, in your street who are struggling with a lot of things. 
and quite often the walls that we build up around ourselves to keep others out are also the walls that we're putting in the way of friendships, they're the walls we're putting in the way of opportunities, they're the walls that we're putting in the way of understanding. One of the most amazing things I think that I've kind of learned in my transition is that in sharing my transition, in, get, in sharing other people's struggles, it's helped me not only to become a better coach, but it's also helped me to understand myself more in understanding others' pains, in understanding other people's difficulties, in understanding other people's struggles in their journey, you're going to take learnings away from that and you're going to understand yourself better. And isn't that what life is all about? It's about understanding and helping others to be the best of themselves and in, you know, taking the learnings and doing that for yourself. So I really hope that you enjoyed this session. I've really enjoyed it. If you've been watching all of my blogs for the last five years, thank you. I love you. I can't believe how incredibly lucky um, I have been to share this journey and transition with you. Um, Five years ago, if I could have seen the person standing in front of me now, I really wouldn't have worried about anything. But, you know, as I said, worrying is part of life. As long as you let it consume you, you put it in the corner and you let it go. I want to thank everyone who watches these videos. I love you all. You're amazing. Please share this journey with anyone who you think will be inspired by this. And if you're struggling in the start of any journey or transition now, go back and watch blogs one, two, three, four, five totally different person. I even blogged after my first week, after my first month, certainly after my first year. Five years ago, I was a wreck. Look at me now. I hope this has inspired you. Thanks everyone for watching. Um, do look at the website Transcending with DLC. There is a blog along to go with on with this session. Um, you can print that off and use that, hopefully as a reminder. And then also there is a podcast on iTunes, Transcending with DLC as well. There's a podcast to go along with this session. Thanks everyone for watching. Be yourself and no one else. Until then, take care. Bye.